Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing the villainous Team Galactic. Now, in the original Gen 4 games, Team Galactic's story was slightly different depending on which version of Sinnoh you played through. So the question becomes, which story will Ilka and Game Freak choose to go down with these remakes? What direction will they choose to take it? And additionally, could there be some surprises awaiting us that aren't even in the original games? Could we get new story content? We're going to discuss all of that in today's video. So with that being said, let's jump straight into things. Now, whenever you're remaking a game, the biggest question is always how much of the original story are you going to use and how much of it are you going to eventually leave out? Or what are you going to add that's brand new? And with Team Galactic, we are going to be looking at a lot of story pieces for a series that really doesn't always focus on story, being the Pokemon franchise. But in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, the original Gen 4 games, Team Galactic and Cyrus's ambitions were central to the plot of the game. And honestly, it was probably the first Pokemon game where the ambitions of the evil team really guided your adventure. Now, this was a change that didn't always sit well with most Pokemon fans. Some Pokemon fans wanted to harken back to the time where you collecting the gym badges was the main focus and the team's plot and the evil team's story kind of took a back seat. But this was the generation where that started to change. So that creates an interesting discussion when it comes to what's their story going to be here. Now, for those of you who have not played the original Gen 4 games in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, the first games to come out from Generation 4 from the Sinnoh region, you have faced one of the two box art legendaries at Spear Pillar at the end of the game. This was the central difference between the two plot lines. In Pokemon Diamond, Cyrus was trying to summon Dialga using the red chain. And in Pokemon Pearl, Cyrus was trying to summon Palkia. Eventually, when we got into Pokemon Platinum, they upheaved this. He was trying to summon both of them. He wanted to create a brand new universe and kind of makes more sense. To do that, you need both the god that controls time and the god that controls space. But he is interrupted because Garatina, who lives in the distortion world, is essentially pissed off with Cyrus and says, you're not fucking up the universe, comes out and beats him and drags him into the distortion world and it's it's nothing good. But this is the central difference in the plot line. There are also some characters that are different. Sharon is a, is a leader of Team Galactic in Platinum. He doesn't exist in Diamond and Pearl. There's a subplot involving Team Galactic trying to revive themselves using Heatran and Stark Mountain and Looker, the secret international police detective, comes and breaks them up. These are a lot of the central differences and central additions that are added in Platinum. So the first question we have to answer if we're talking about these remakes is, are they going to use the bulk of the galactic story from Diamond and Pearl, or are they going to use bits and pieces from Platinum? And I think that central word bits and pieces is going to be key. I have a feeling that it's going to go the Platinum route in that Cyrus in Brilliant Diamond is going to try to bring about Palkia or Dialga, and in Pearl, he's going to try to bring about Palkia. I think Garatina is going to be sectioned off and it's going to be used in the post game. I don't think he's going to have an impact on Spear Pillar. I think it's just going to be you and Cynthia and Barry coming in and stopping Team Galactic. Looker, I think, is a character that will actually be there. I think Looker was is a fan favorite feature to the Pokemon franchise now. He's appeared in countless games ever since Platinum. And I think that his inclusion not being there would just seem a little strange. On top of that, I think they'll probably keep the Team Galactic antics at Stark Mountain, and I think they'll keep the boss Sharon. Another thing that's different in Platinum is that we get a lot more backstory as to Cyrus and Rotom. There's a connection between Cyrus and Rotom, and we see it in the Team Galactic headquarters in Veilstone City. There's a room you can go to, and once you go into that room, you can change Rotom's form. You needed an event to do this in the original games, so I would have to imagine they're either going to give that out via mystery gift, like they did in Platinum, or they'll just bake it into the core part of the game. But I think that when it comes to story content with Platinum and with Diamond and Pearl, it's going to be 80% Diamond and Pearl and then a little bit of Platinum mixed in with the bulk of the Platinum story content for Team Galactic being in the post game, not being in the main portion of the game. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. And frankly, what are you doing? We are quickly, quickly approaching 6,000 subscribers in a way that I never thought possible. And it's it's really thanks to you guys and enjoying these Pokemon videos that I've done in the last month. So I want to give a big thank you. But if you're not subscribed and you're still watching this, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And let me know down in the comments, if you're not subscribed, why aren't you? And how can I change that? With that being said, let's get right back to the topic. 
Now, if you've watched my channel for any any amount of time now, you will know that one of the reasons why I think it's going to mostly be Diamond and Pearl in these remakes, besides the fact that they are remakes of Diamond and Pearl and they're not remakes of Platinum, is just that we've seen a lot from these games to tell us that they're trying to find creative ways to bring in Platinum content. For example, in the Grand Underground that we saw in the newest trailer, you can see that there's a bunch of Pokemon that were more easily obtainable in Platinum than they were in Diamond and Pearl, if not totally not obtainable in Diamond and Pearl, but were eventually in Platinum. And it seems as if Ilka has thrown these guys into the underground and been like, here is the feature of how we're going to let you get these Pokemon. Pokemon like Houndoom come to mind. Houndour is one of the only fire type families in the Sinnoh region. And it was a little bit later, I believe you could find him to the south of Veilstone City in the original games. So these are Pokemon that you're going to have access to much earlier. That mixed with some of the story content that we've seen from Team Galactic and just from the general aesthetic of the games in the trailers is what leads me to believe they're going to lean more heavily into Diamond and Pearl more so than Platinum, but Platinum did add plenty of things to make us think they're at least going to throw us some bones in the post game, which is why all that Galactic post game stuff, the stuff in the battle area, the stuff in Stark Mountain, I think that's all going to be there. Even if, listen, even if we've seen the battle area on the map of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl and Pla uh, Diamond and Pearl's remakes already, and there's no battle frontier. There's a battle tower there, so we're going to see Barry's dad chilling up there, but there's no frontier. It's not a Platinum remake, and I think we need to be very aware of that. But this all brings us to the discussion of, are we going to see new Team Galactic story stuff in these games? We have had a very much... We're in a very different place with the Pokemon franchise and with the lore of the Pokemon franchise since Diamond and Pearl first came out. We've had the the exploration of the multiverse and different universes in Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and Meg Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for that matter. We've had tons of more legendaries added. We've had so much more mythos of the Pokemon world explored. And one of the central reasons why Team Galactic is such a well-loved villain is because their focus is really on those myths, that lore. There are a ton of examples in the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl games where we see Cyrus or we see other members of Team Galactic kind of espousing their beliefs about the lore of the Pokemon universe, examining the relics and the artifacts of the Sinnoh region, looking at wall paintings, trying to explore Mount Coronet and find that way, that hidden way up to Spear Pillar. Their team and their aspirations are so heavily entrenched in the lore of Pokemon that I think it's possible that even if we don't see story additions in these remakes that are brand new, I think we're going to see some call outs and some callbacks to more recent Pokemon games and some of the lore things that they have built in their games. For example, we've learned about like two more old wars in the Pokemon world ever since Diamond and Pearl and Platinum came out. We learned about the war in the Unova region in Gen 5 with the two kings, uh, the two kings who were brothers. We learned a lot about the war in Kalos, what was it, 3,000 or 6,000? It was 3,000 years ago with AZ and his Floet and the ultimate weapon and all of these different huge world changing and culture altering events in the Pokemon world that took place hundreds of thousands, hundreds and thousands of years ago. I think Team Galactic could really give the players some Easter eggs, some hints about what else has happened in the Pokemon world. And I think there's a chance that that lore aspect of Team Galactic is how they're able to expand the story in a way that's interesting. Additionally, I think this is also how they're going to handle Garatina and that Platinum post-game content. I think a lot of the post-game is going to be centered on Garatina, at least I hope. If it's not, frankly, it's going to be a major disappointment. And trust me, you'll have a video on this channel in November with me critiquing the hell out of this game if it's just the Diamond and Pearl post game. If you can just go to the send back spring, is that where you find Garatina in Diamond and Pearl? And you can just fight him. Like that's not, that's not good enough. For a game and for a, for a generation that when coming out, you had people who work for the Pokemon company, Junichi Masuda is a great example, who talked about how Platinum version was, in their eyes, the ultimate complete version of Generation 4. So to not include some of those central things into the game, and to not update Team Galactic's story, at least slightly, to reflect the new lore additions that we've got in recent Pokemon games, I think would be malpractice. I don't think it would be very good, I don't think it would be enjoyable for the player, and it would do a lot to hinder the idea that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are the central way to play Generation 4.
That's what I think. I think we're going to see more lore content. It's just a question of when in the game will we see it? Will it be in the main story? Or will it be in the post game? So with that being said, I would love to know what you guys think. What, do, what story of Team Galactics do you think we're going to see in these remakes? How heavily will they lean into Diamond and Pearl's story? And how much of Platinum's story will they take? Will they take bits and pieces or will they go all in? Will it be Platinum's story? We don't fully know yet. This is still speculation, which is my favorite time to be a Pokemon fan. Let me know down in the comments and be sure to leave a like as well because it does a ton to show me that you're enjoying these BDSP videos and that you want to see more. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.